From the old Pagan Weekly site and West Ashley to the latest on 526, I sit down exclusively with Charleston County Council Member Brantley Moody for the special edition of Quintense Post Ups. And be sure to download the free Quintense Post Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel and listen Friday on my free Quintense Post Ups iHeartRadio podcast. Brantley Moody. Welcome back to Quentin's Close Up. Thank you, Quentin. It's great to be with you as always. As always. I know last night the West Ashley Revitalization Commission met, and from what I read in the news reports, the old Pink and Whitney site is still unclear about its right. future. Right. What's unclear about the plans right now in your mind? Um, well, it's, just, it's still early for the city. Uh, the, the, the concepts they presented last night were sort of a public private uh, partnership. They, they really want. Uh, that gateway to have a nice, you know, beautiful building to look at, and then maybe behind there have some type of, uh, you know, retail restaurants, things like that. So uh, the issue is parking. I think the neighbors over there are, you know, they the neighbors there don't do not want a five six story structure, whether it's a building or a parking garage or anything like that. Uh, so as long as it's it's modest and good looking, uh, it, it may work, but it's still early for the city. What will work when it comes to SC seven and SC one seventy one in your mind? Well. Uh, nothing right now. Um, we have heard loud and clear from the from the residents of, of Sandhurst and Huntington Woods, uh, generally, you know, kind of behind Miss Roses over there, that they did not like Round One. And then, of course, the residents of Northridge Terrace and Park Shore, where I live, uh, were, were adamantly opposed to the Round Two drawings. So, uh, as I stated in the West Ashford Revitalization Commission meeting last night, I told the city, I said, "You guys better plan to do with your property." Uh, that which uh, flows with the current roads. Now, that being said, there were a few things that came out of the, the both rounds of the 7 and 171. So uh, that is a, a crosswalk or a bike ped path between the Bilo and Orange Grove Road. Uh, that's just kind of a, 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 a very a vacant, unused area. So I think that, that would gain some traction. And then the intersection was set at an Orange Grove Road. That's a, that's a mess. So um, maybe taking some of the... Uh, some of the features of the 61 and 7 intersection and trying to take that down to 7 and Orange Grove. And a small, it's a smaller footprint, but take that down there, you know, two left turn lanes, for example, going towards the North Bridge from, from the Orange Grove Elementary side. That seems to be very popular. Uh, and also, you know, doing bike you know, pedestrian access improvements okay. there at that intersection as we can, maybe some mast arm lights, just kind of beautifying it. And then also that intersection ending Parker's gas station okay. is coming in. So there's a lot of excitement about that. Um, I don't mean to make light of the, the term desert, but it is a gas desert there. Okay. So you've got to go a little ways to find gasoline in that area. So I think people are pretty excited about that. And I know people are still excited about trying to get this recycle center back on the track, I guess. Yes, yes, we, we are. Um, the Environmental Management Committee uh, meets on July 25th okay. uh, at County Council, and uh, we're expected to have a, a finalized or something to hopefully vote on. Uh, that will restart construction. Our staff and our legal department have been very, working very hard at that. And one good thing about the delay, there's not many much good about the delay, is it is it's allowed us to also revisit the equipment uh, piece that we were having built or fabricated for the, for the recycling center. So that equipment will be up to date. It'll be 2019, 2020 equipment uh, versus 2015 or 16 equipment. So that's allowed us to go back and make sure we've got the latest and greatest in the equipment. Now you got talk, you talk about the latest and greatest. How much will that cost the county? Well, we, we're going to find that on the 25th. Okay. Um, we also took the op opportunity when we were getting the recycling center back on track. We're actually we we're maybe even going to enlarge it a little bit, maybe okay. by about 5,000 square feet or so, to um, to give us some room for some um, some future technology. So uh, there's a lot of cool things going on. Where, uh, for instance, turning turning uh, recyclables into into diesel fuel. I mean, what if we could do something like that and then fuel our fleet? I mean, how cool could that be? So. We kind of try to look ahead and say, what emerging technologies are out there? Maybe we should account for now, build out some space now that, that may be used for things like that. So it wasn't just a, a get it restarted, but let's get it restarted and make sure we've got it current. Current. You talked earlier about transportation, you know, obviously with 171. Obviously, there's still a big talk about the, the half cent sales tax. Um, let me ask you this How can council say that you're going to use the half cent transportation tax money? When doing four discussions in council, it was specifically excluded from the referendum. How are voters being misled or being informed in your point? Well, well, remember that was a little bit before my time, okay. but I know that the voters voted for a tax increase for roads, they voted for a tax increase for mass transit, mm -hmm. and they voted for a tax increase for greenbelts. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, 
to your point, uh, what projects have not been started? That's what the critics of 526 say. Well, you're going to take all this money away from away from these projects and use it on 526. Well, that's clearly not the case. Uh, highway 41 is underway. Main 17 is underway. Savannah Highway Capacity is underway. Uh, Cross Town Study is underway. What am I missing? Um, you know, the, the, the Highway 41. I think I said that. But all of these these projects um, are, are underway. So clearly, that's not happening. Now, I know your fellow council member, Herb Sass, actually wrote an op-ed in the paper saying it was not going to be used. Is that bait and switch? You'd have to ask Herb about that. Okay. Now, in your mind, how much is this project going to cost ultimately? The 526? No, the, the half-cent sales track. You know, all those projects go from that. Well, I can tell you that, that okay. let, let's talk about 526 first. Okay. I mean, let's, re, let's visit that cost first. Okay. Okay, the, the cost on the table is $725 million. Um, our critics, and they may be right, who knows, we don't know how much it's going to cost. It's going to cost a billion dollars. Well, what if it comes in under that? Boy, that would just blow their minds because the $725, $725 million estimate uh, included a 20% contingency cost. The contingency means we just don't know. We're going to throw a big number in there for things that we can't anticipate or don't know. So 20% of $725 million is $150 million. So what if it came in at six fifty dollars or six seventy five dollars or something like that? That'd be pretty interesting. Um, from what I've been able to tell, all of the projects that, we, that we're budgeting for are generally, um, there's, I don't want to say fluff, that's not the right word, but maybe it is. If, if we think a project's going to be $15 million, I think we estimated it at $18 million, something like that, to try to uh, make sure we've got enough money dedicated to each project. So where we come in, the compilation of all those things, Quentin, we're way too early to tell you that. Now, is council committed to like an open end cost for all of this? Open end cost. So for 526, for example, that's what we're talking about. Okay. Yes, we have committed to covering the, the the CIV covers their $400 million, whatever it is. Uh, and then county council is committed to cover our piece plus legal challenges and things like that. Any cost overruns, we have committed to doing that, yes. That brings you to my next question. Why do you think council will prevail in its lawsuit, well, the coastal conservation lawsuit, um, in, in regards to 526 in your mind? Well, um, I'm not going to discuss any legal, sure. legal challenges. Sure. Right. 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 I don't want to, uh, to get into that. We expected legal challenges. I'm, I'm happy sooner rather than later. It's fine with me. Uh, but I wouldn't want to discuss it. Sure. I just don't want to get any strategy. Oh, no, 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 no worries. Yeah. How, is, well, how is all of this responsible use of taxpayers' money in your mind? Um, go ask the residents of my district okay. and ask them if it's a, it's a good use of taxpayer money. The ones that, uh, you know, the 25 or 30,000 cars a day that drive through my district to get to Johns Island or to get to James Island. Um, ask my residents if that's a good use of their of the taxpayer dollars. I bet you 75% of them will tell you it is. Now, I, 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 <laughs> I didn't even have the I-26 yeah. on the table, but let me talk more about that because what's fact and what's fiction right now when it comes to I-26 in your mind? Um, fact is that support for the project has never been stronger. Um, fact is that we have an overwhelming majority of county council that's, uh, that's uh, committed to doing it. Uh, Fiction is uh, all the all the keyboard heroes, you know, stuff that you see thrown out there. That most everything that they're talking about is fiction. So that's that's a couple of things. Now, when if I were speaking to you for Quentin's full steps six months from now, what do you what do you hope you can talk to me more about when it comes to your district and Charleston County Council? Um, in my district, I hope I hope we will have a definitive. Uh, path on 7171. Okay. Uh, it'd be nice if the city had some direction on the old pig site. Uh, further uh, further out, Savannah Highway continues to be a, a problem child. Uh, our Savannah Highway capacity studies are, are ongoing and hopefully we'll be able to try to figure out some of those things. Um, not really under my purview, but I sit on the commission, the West, West Ash Revitalization Commission. There, we have just got to get started on stuff. There's so much low hanging fruit on that on that uh, that West Ashley Master Plan that just nothing is happening. It's just very frustrating. Very frustrating. And I know that when I interviewed you and obviously the man, you know, oh, for point this full steps a couple months ago, we talked about the Glen McConnell Parkway. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yep. Where are we with that right now? That's that's still that's we're just finishing up the uh, I guess the public comment period is sort of over. Quentin, it's interesting in my short time on council. That's really the least controversial thing I've seen. Uh, there is some some concern of the residents, kind of province province commons channel five area up there about the noise um, that could be generated. But for the most part, everybody 
has endorsed adding an additional lane and also adding the bike pedestrian lane on the West Ashley High School side. Um, it, that's that's been the almost a slam dunk as anything I've seen in my short time on council. And how are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great. It's um, July is sort of a quiet month for us. We finish up May and June are kind of a, a, a crazy race getting our budget done. So after we get that done, we we have actually have a little bit of time to uh, to decompress a couple of weeks. And as I said, July 25th we'll sort of get started back with with committee meetings and full council meetings on the 30th. So it's it it, it does it does everybody good at council to sort of take a break because we knock some heads during the budget process and uh, we're friends and we agree to disagree on a lot of things but it's good to take a little break too um so we'll hopefully come back energized ready to go for next year but but personally everybody's doing great you talk about next year you talk about that budget what do you hope is in the budget when it comes to charleston county council well no new tax increase is what i is what i've told him uh we've had the budget this year passed with no tax increase okay. and, and our county staff had sort of intimated that we may be looking at a tax increase next year and i said you can Count me out of that. So um, you, you better do do more with less. Is basically what I what I told them. And I, I in 2020, I suspect that we'll have a. I don't anticipate a tax increase in 2020. That's what I want to see. I want to see efficient use of taxpayer dollars, uh, making sure all the vendors, all the companies that we employ that do services for the county, um, that we are that we're getting value for our dollars, um, that we're providing timely services for our constituents, and that we don't we don't raise taxes. And I know Charleston County is big on this, and obviously we're in the middle of it. But hurricane season. Yes. How do you, the average person prepare for that right now? Just, just pay attention. If you've got a generator, get it out, get it started, get you know, go over your checklist. Uh, do know that the, the county's uh, emergency operations center. We are, we are already uh, drilling and, and going through the paces, getting ready to go for that. Um, I have been up there when that center has been activated, and I can tell the citizens that that place is second to none. Uh, they are, and, and that's boy, I tell you what. People talk about, like in my district, you know, you'll see a PSD uh, trash truck go by, a city trash truck sometimes, you know, the frustration about that stuff, about, about the lack of collaboration between municipalities. That emergency operations center is something that we do very well. Um, and, and the counties too, Dorchester and Berkeley, we all kind of lean on each other, but that's a that's a real quality uh, effort. That is amazing. Yeah. Well, Councilman Brantley Moody, thank you so much for your time. Again, thank welcome you. back to Thank Office. you, sir. Always great to be here. Just calling up here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah.